De Silva coming into the ring, 10-0 from Brazil. Here's a guy, again, we've talked about walking the walk, talking the talk. If you're going to claim to be the best at anything, there can be no hiccups. You must come out, you must dominate, and you must show why you consider yourself or others should consider you the best in the world. Well, yeah. one thing about him, too, is that he had trouble going to Japan to defend his title. And they were like, you got to pay for your own flight. And he went online, and he asked people for money. And Yeah, one thing, he's got a great story, Jasir De Silva. And, and, and while people do consider him the number one, make no mistake, he's not a, a, a bold, you know, boastful person or anything like that. It's just, hey, people call him number one in the world. Uh, when he went over and, and, and won the fight in, in B, uh, against BJ in Japan, it was a, uh, a non-title fight, unfortunately. But he does have the Brazilian shooto title as well. But you mentioned that he needed money to, uh, to get to Rio de Janeiro to, to uh, defend that title. A 1,500-mile journey from his hometown. Uh, ended up really relying on, on a, a few people that he asked specifically that, hey, we please give big thanks. They're on his T-shirt tonight, but he wanted to give a shout-out. Thomas Rios, Jordan Green, Benjamin Claflin, Esther Lynn, Scott Simpson, Benjamin Dixon, Candace McKinnon, Nick Bailey, Justin Cooper, Diego Tadelli, Thomas Marcinek, and Tony Loise. These are people that chipped in out of their pocket to help this guy defend the title. So uh, he's a guy with a lot of love in the hardcore community. And uh, he's making his U.S. debut tonight, and, and he wants to show the world that he is for real, and he wants to show those people that helped him out that he really appreciates what they did. And that shows how much of a fighter he is. He could have said, you know what, they don't want to fly me out my corner. Forget it, I'm not going to defend my belt. I'm not going to fight BJ, but, you know, he found a way, you know. He found a way to get it done. you got to appreciate that. And I'm going to find a way to get me a jacket and put names on it people who want to send me money for the Andre Covington Party Foundation. Let's kick it up to the center ring for our ring announcer, Mr. Joe Martinez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we drop down to the flyweight division. This attraction is scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Introducing to you first, finding out of the blue corner, he's a wrestler standing five feet, five inches tall, weighing in 124 and three-quarter pounds. He brings an outstanding professional record, 13 victories and three defeats into the cage. Fighting out of Tempe, Arizona, he is Danny the Gremlin Martinez. And next is opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner, a jiu-jitsu practitioner standing five feet four inches tall. He weighed in 125 and one quarter pound. As a professional, he is perfect in the cage. Ten victories with no defeats. Fighting out of Natal, Brazil. Here is Juicy A. De Silva. <laughs> Referee in charge, Josh Rosenthal. All right, gentlemen, we've given your instructions. I expect a clean fight. Obey my commands all times. Defend yourselves all times. Touch gloves, go back. Let's do this. All right, two guys ready to take this to the next level. You got De Silva, very humble guy. Came out to some gospel music. Yeah, it's uh, pretty cool when you see it's, it's amazing to see the contrast where they come from. Martinez hangs this fight banner with 15 sponsors on it over there, and De Silva's, you know, got the name of, of 12 individuals on his shorts that, that helped, uh, you know, make this possible for him. So very excited to see if De Silva can live up to the hype. Danny Martinez believes uh, the hype should be his, and he believes this is a chance to make a statement. Round one action underway. Martinez is good friends with Dominic Cruz, the WC Bantamweight champion, and really credits Dominic Cruz for kind of turning things around for him and getting him refocused on fighting. Big traded shots early. And you see right away a, a guillotine choke attempt by Danny Martinez. De Silva in the full guard. Like, yeah, the other guy's been, uh, afraid to mix it up, you know, uh, just start keeping it on the feet, and Danny, when he got taken out, went right, right for that guillotine. It's not super deep, but yet it's... Yeah, it was a little, a little high up the back there, and, and it just couldn't get the job done. De Silva obviously has been in this position before, so he was very, very comfortable in the hold. One minute in, he's going to set up in top position. Martinez on his back with the closed guard. Nice scrap early, though. I wasn't sure if there would be any hesitancy on, on De Silva's part. You know, obviously fighting the U.S. for the first time, that's a big journey, but you know, he has gone to Japan. No, I, I, mean, I think uh, yesterday when we were doing the weigh-ins, uh, for the interviews, I, as Danny was predicting, he's like, I'm going to knock him out. And then uh, I asked his shirt's prediction, he's like, oh, you know, be a good fight. Well, he said he's going to knock you out. And then he just starts popping his knuckles, and I think he's, he got kind of hyped up about that, you know. <laughs> and then after, after the weigh-ins, Danny was like, I don't want to touch gloves with you. He's like, okay. He's like, I see how it is. I like it. Welcome to America, I guess. Martinez, no respect for the number one ranking. 
Is that a good strategy to have uh, this season? And, 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 you know, Danny seems like an emotional fighter. I think he, he likes that intensity, so it's good for if it works for Danny, it's perfect for him, you know? Me, I'm a little bit more laid back, so it just all depends on who you are. But uh, the good thing about this sport, you say something bad with someone or you treat someone bad, they have the liberty to make you pay for it. That's right. This is true. You gotta back it up. We'll settle it in the ring. The cage. The Silva staying tight in the clinch. Not really looking for any knees, any foot stomps. Not really looking to inflict any damage. Really more focused on the control and the positioning. Did you grab the fence there. I think it was Warren to actually let go of that. Yeah, the silver moves around to the back. You see Martinez trying to use that cage and spin in, get away from this position. Oh, he has the back. Yeah, excellent work by the silver. Just drop down before Danny Martinez could turn into him. He's on the back. A little more than two minutes remain. Great balance, too. You can see he's, he keeps everything compact. He's calm. Yeah, Danny definitely has the advantage of the wrestling, but what Forbes got, what Forbes BJ has on him is that he's so good grappling with, with the gi and without the gi that he can neutralize Danny's wrestling. From there, you know, Danny's worried about getting taken down. He's like, no, I'm on your back now. That's right. Got the figure four body lock around it. Danny Martinez doing a good job right now of controlling the wrist, defending that choke. Uh, you know, obviously that's going to be what uh, De Silva's going to be looking for from the back is to get that choke, but Martinez doing a good job of controlling the wrist and not allowing that to happen. That said, uh, he's not countering in any way. He's certainly not offering any offense. Yeah, Danny, but he's in his corner. He's listening to his corner. He's right there, you know, so you can see there. He's giving some instructions, you know. De Silva keeps that body triangle tight. Starts there there a choke. Soften him up with the punches. Thought he had it underneath there. Had to let it go. I thought that was it. Martinez almost just gave it to him. Yeah, the only thing is he was a little too high off the back. He might be able to get bucked off right here. You know, if he gets tripods, he might, he might fall off. That's the only downtime from his A little position. high, isn't he? Yeah, a little high. He should, he should get his butt lower to his butt and score his hips. Slide down just a little bit. Still got that body lock on the standing. Danny Martinez, the Silva, going to try to lock in a, a standing rear naked choke if he can. I see those legs giving out any minute now. Oh, yeah, that definitely puts a lot of pressure on your quads. You even, with, even with an ant on your back, right? It's still it's yeah, still yeah. heavy. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's nickname baby ant. Martinez again. I mean, he, give him credit for defending the choke. He's not giving it up. I, I thought he was going to give it up when he was on the ground. The Silva softened him up with a few punches, but and, and and now you see the Silva has adjusted. He's lower now, so he's not not in any danger. I don't think even if Martinez tipped forward, I don't think he'd, I don't think he'd come off. What he about just the bounce off the cage? What about just falling backwards? That happened before in one of the old uh, PFCs when uh, Davis Suarez did it to Bobby Mitchell, knocked him out cold. Yeah. Silva looked to his corner. Obviously, very calm, very patient. He will survive this round. Yeah, not doing a lot of damage. A couple of little short punches there, but you know Martinez was in a trouble spot for a very very long time. So. You have to give him credit. At least he knew how to survive. Well, that's the thing with Danny. Even though he, he's had three losses to, to Hopnick and Joseph, he's never been finished. And he, he fought Joseph at 35s, Hopnick at 45s, and he hasn't been finished. So, I mean, he's durable, and he finds a way to get out of those bad positions. Yeah, but do you want to spend half the round holding a guy on your back and think that this is going to keep you motivated and, and throughout this fight? That's the way to spend a lot of energy. Energy that you're going to need later on. Yeah, it's a, it's a moral victory, and those don't add up to much on your no. win and loss record. You know what I mean? So, yeah, definitely a bad position. He does not want to work back to there. But he, he did prove, though, that he can hang with him on the ground. Even though he was in a bad position, he didn't get finished. So that's some confidence right True. there. There was that left hand. It, it kind of came right as uh, Jasir De Silva was shooting in. Uh, it almost looked like uh, he dropped him, but really I think he was already changing levels and it just barely tagged him. Got the guillotine choke in there from his back, and, and, and that was the good start for Danny Martinez, uh, but it went downhill from there. I don't think that early action was enough. De Silva didn't get the finish, but he was in such a dominant position for so long. I, I think you've got to give that first round to Jasir De Silva. Oh, definitely.